Okay, guys, so I have a story that none of y'all want, but I have to tell it because I was just reminded of it. Um, so how I was reminded, let's start off with that. Um, I was on TikTok instead of sleeping. It is 2 in the morning. So I was on TikTok, and a video on my For You page came up, and it was by um, the YouTuber Wang, who I really like and does, like, history of the internet kind of things, where he's like, for, uh, whatever. And check him out. He's really good. I like him. Either way, um, a short video of his showed up, and the first thing, it was a picture, and I knew instantly what it was, and he did not have to say what it was, I knew what it was, and he was just like, you'll never guess what this is, and I was like, I know what that is. Um, so anyway, the video was, I don't know what it's actually called, but there's a thing that can happen sometimes um, when you have your menstrual cycle. Um, a thing that can happen, and usually doesn't happen unless there's some sort of hormonal imbalance or something. Um, your entire, like, uterine lining can come out in one piece. And that's really weird. Like, instead of breaking down into blood and dispersing over three to seven days, it just, you give birth to your uterine lining. Um, I've had this happen to me at least three times. And the first time that I've had this happen, I, I, I want to say I was 18. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I was either 18 or 19. I'm pretty sure I was 18 because it was after high school, but I was still with my high school boyfriend. You know, he was still in high school, I was a year older, and I was out of school, and he, he was, whatever. But, um, so I straight up thought I had a miscarriage. Like, I thought I had somehow gotten pregnant and miscarried. Like, that's, that's what I thought happened. So I told nobody. No, I did tell somebody. I told my mom that I needed to go to the lady doctor but like i didn't really say why i don't i don't remember if i told her why but um when i was th well i had i had taken a picture of the thing and like i showed it to the doctor and she was just like oh this is a thing and i was like are you sure i didn't like miscarry a child and she was like well we can do a pregnancy test and see if like cause sometimes it like you'll it'll still say you're pregnant. I don't know. They did a pregnancy test on me. No, I obviously wasn't pregnant because, like, I literally just had my period. A very solid period, um, might I add. But, um, anyway, so back into the moment of that. Um, I thought I had had a miscarriage. And what do you do when you have a miscarriage? Like, you bury it in your backyard. Correct. Um, so I put it in a container. Um, specifically, the container that I put it in was a box that, um, what are they called? P plugs, these things. A box for a pair of Hello Kitty plugs that glow in the dark. Box from that, because it was, it was that small. It was like, little box like that big and the thing I have a picture of it is saved into my google drive like I have a picture of it just sort of like sitting on the pad there's like no blood on the pad it's just this big thing in the middle of it I have that picture if anyone wants to see it like it's very interesting anyway um so I put it in the little box and so I don't remember if somebody was home when when like it happened oh well also okay so <laughs> Um, when I, I guess, passed it, um, I remember I was in the kitchen, and I usually, well, okay, whenever, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, okay, so, like, when I first started getting my periods whenever I was, like, 12, they were, like, really, really heavy, and I'd have really, really bad cramps, but then, um, like, within a year of having my period, I got on birth control, so that, like, the, the, the pills would... I'd have less periods and they'd be more regulated and just like, yeah, so I'd only have like four periods a year 
and I wouldn't have to deal with the cramps and like ruining all my pants. So yeah, that, but then whenever I started to become sexually active, I switched to a pill that was monthly because, um, I'm very, very anxious. Anyway, don't know what happened or why this thing happened, but, um, anyway, so I was in the kitchen and I don't, I'm pretty sure I, I knew I had already started my period because I was wearing a pad. So like I knew I'd already started, but like I was in the kitchen. I don't know if I was making food, but I remember where I was standing in the kitchen and I got a really, really, really sharp pain. And it was like, I don't even know how to describe it, but it was like in the place you feel cramps. So I was like, oh, this is just a really, really bad cramp. But it was like, it was like, the f you, you ever like really, really, really have to poop? And, like, you can't hold it. And it's like you're trying to hold it. But it's like, no, your body is like poop now. It was sort of like that feeling. But, like, more to the front. than like, in my tummy area. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, dude. Um. Anyway, big cramp. And ouch. So, I like go to the bathroom. And, like, I just... This, like, mass of, like... I don't even know how to describe it, but it was like skin. It was like if I didn't know better, um, I would have thought that it was like like a condom that was like lost up in there and I just like gave birth to. Like it was that texture and feeling and it was like it was like a sheet and it was like a not like a sheet, it was like a pocket, whenever I tried to like investigate, because it was all bundled up and covered in blood, so whenever I tried to like pull it apart, it was definitely, it was like tissue, like I knew it was something, and it like ripped a little bit, and there was blood all over it, and I was just like, okay, like, I don't, and I was like, I don't know, so um, I thought I had a miscarriage, and then I put it in a little box, and um, so I had a little funeral for it, um, and I took the little box that had my uterine lining in it, um, that I thought was my unborn child, and I took it to my backyard of my childhood home. Y'all want the address? I'll tell you the address. It's 17718 Wake Court, Crosby, Texas, 77532. Go check it out. Go see if my uterine lining's still chilling under the shed. So, um, I took the box, threw it under the shed, um... I moved out of that house in like 2015, so if, if you live in that house, maybe look for my uterine lining under the shed. Um, anyways, so um, I don't think I ever actually informed my boyfriend at the time that I had, I eventually found out that I hadn't had a miscarriage. Like, because I told him that, like, I was pregnant and I had miscarried. Just, like, all that information all at once. And I just, I don't think I ever, like, clarified that once I found out what it was. Anyway, so it happened again a couple years later. Um, it might have, I feel like it happened three times at least. So I know it just wasn't those two times, because I feel like a third time, like, solidifies what things, like, that it's a thing that happens. But, um, the other time that I remember, and that made me kind of, like, figure out why, I guess, was, um, I had, well, I was on the pill, because I was living with my different boyfriend, living with a boyfriend guy, so I was on birth control, and, um, you know, you have to go to the doctor, like, every year to refill and get the prescription sh shit done. But, um, I couldn't get an appointment for, like, a couple months. And I, I don't know why I didn't just ask him to, like, keep giving me a prescription. But, like, for two or three months, I was off of the pill. And it was fine, because, like, me and him weren't having sex. Like... We, at that point, we already hated each other. We was just there because I had nowhere else to go. But, um, so we weren't having sex. I wasn't too worried about it. But, um, so after I get off the pill, my next period, it was, it was just like my lining. 
and it was just it was completely just that no bleeding leading up to it no bleeding after just the passing of tissue and and I took a picture of that too it's getting my google drive but um at that point I started looking into stuff because like it happened right whenever I was off my pill because like when I'm on my pill my um my periods would they were so consistent like like to the point where my period was synced up with when I'd go to my psychiatrist. So, like, it was just, it would, it would always happen on the same day every month. Because, like, you know how pills work where it's, like, three weeks, you take the birth control, and then you have a week, you either, you just, you take the placebos or you just don't take it at all. Like, I just don't take it at all. And so, um, I'd start taking the, I'd do the week off. And I believe it'd start on Sunday, usually. Mine would start on Sunday. So I on Sunday, I'd start taking the placebos, and Wednesday is when I would start my period. And it would last until maybe, like, Saturday. And, like, I was cool with that, because it was just chill, and I didn't have cramps, and none of my pants were ruined. So I was cool with that. Um, yeah, but then it happened whenever I got off the pill... There was, there was also a time, another period irregularity, there was a time, it was right before I got sick, um, which was, I want to say 2015, I want to say it was 2015, well, I was in college, and, and I got sick in like, March or April of 2015, but like a few months before that, something happened. I, I thought I was pregnant, like, because I, I had gone, well, I was off birth control, because I didn't have a boyfriend. I was like, like, I don't, I don't need this. I'm not doing anything. And so I was off birth control for like a year, and I just did not have periods, which is, um, not normal. Um, definitely because before, whenever I wasn't on the pill, I would have really, really long, heavy, disastrous periods. So then I had gotten off the pill, and I just didn't have periods. And it went, it was seven months without a period. So I went to the lady doctor, and I told her that it was like, like, I haven't had my period. And she, um... She, like, flipped a few pages and then just, like, asked me a few questions. And, like, I know where she's going with this and why she said what she did. But I feel like having asked a little bit more questions would have saved me from an emergency room visit later on whenever I do get sick. Because I feel like me having not had my period for seven months was, like, a big sign that something wasn't right and I needed to be seeing a doctor. Anyway, um, so she just asks me, she's like, well, have you been losing any weight? Have you, or have you, uh, something, something like that, something about losing weight. And I'm like, yeah, I've lost a little weight. And she's like, well, that's probably it. I'm like, okay, but like, I'm not trying to lose weight. I don't, I don't know how she worded it, but like, I told her that I had lost weight, but she didn't ask if like I had started working out or anything. I was just like, yeah, I've lost a little weight. But I didn't say that, like, I'm trying to lose weight. You know? Does that make sense? Because, you know, like, whenever you're losing weight quickly, it can affect your period. Um, but also, if you exercise a lot and you're very active, it can mess with your periods. Um, well, you see, what was happening with me is that I have undiagnosed Crohn's disease. So, I was getting no nutrients from any of the food I ate. It's... So, yeah, but we wouldn't find that out for another two months whenever I have to go to the emergency room because my appendix had burst, I think, probably. And like I go in there because my appendix has burst. Um, I went in straight from my... <laughs> Oh, 
Give me a sec. I know the word. Uh, philosophy. There we go. Straight from my philosophy um, midterm. Like, I had 104 fever when I did that midterm. Like, it was a thing. And straight after that, I had my mom pick me up and bring me to the emergency room. And they were like, yeah, your appendix burst. And I'm like, yep. I told my mom that five days ago, and she said it was just cramps. Um, so anyway, my appendix had already burst, and that's why I felt better, like, better enough to, like, actually be going to school this whole time. Um, but, like, I was, it was in a lot of pain. But then they did my, they got my appendix out n at night, no, lyproscopically, there's the word. They got out my appendix that way, so I don't get a super cool scar from that. But wait, there's more. I do get super cool scars further down the line. Um, so when they take out my appendix and stuff, and then they wake me up, and they're like, yeah, we got out your appendix. It had burst. And the bile and sludge, whatever's going on in the appendix, has caused me to have sepsis. Well... And they also noticed, while they were in there, that my intestines are rather inflamed. And that I probably have Crohn's disease, but they'll have to do... Uh... The, 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 the butt scope. What's that called? Colonoscopy. And then they did, and that was a traumatic experience. But... But I have Crohn's disease, so that's fun. You know, this video is now at 17 minutes, and I was here to tell you about the funeral for my unborn uterine lining. And just, this is where we ended up. Did you guys know that the gender neutral term for like aunt or uncle is parsib parsib like parents sibling parsib and like i mean it, it's the only thing that makes sense because i read a few other things that didn't make sense and i didn't like them but parsib it makes sense but it just sounds stupid <laughs> like i don't like i don't want my niece to be like here's mina my parsib like, what? You're what now? No, but she just calls me Hermina. She's like, that's Mamina. And that's, that's the Mina. Anyway, want to talk more about the weird, my weird health problems? That's always fun. Um, I haven't had a period this year. I don't think. I might have. I might have had one. I know I had one period in San Antonio. So since I've been here, I've had my period once. But before that, it was like a really long time. So I had gotten on birth control pills through the mail. You know you can do that? You can just get birth control sent to you if you have insurance, which I no longer do. So since I don't have insurance, I'm no longer on the pill. And so after I got off the pill, I completely stopped having periods. Mm -hmm. Until like, I have one in February. I want to say it was February. Cause February was when the blizzard was. Somewhat, sometime around there. But like. Anyway. If anyone would like to borrow. My reproductive organs. To help you. With your reproductive dreams. I'm available. Um, my womb has never been lived in. I promise to take good care of it while I'm growing it. I just really need money. I will be your surrogate mother. Like, I will be your surrogate mother. No, I will be the surrogate mother of your child. I will carry your child for you. I just, that that's the only way. It's the only way I can have it all, man, is if I become a surrogate and just like, because I get to experience pregnancy and giving birth and all that fun stuff. 
and I don't have to keep the baby. Like, I legally can't keep the baby. Just, because, like, I very much want to go through childbirth. Because it's just, like, you can't just not do something. Like, this is something my body was literally made to do. Like, I want to do it, but I don't want to have a kid. You know? Kids suck. I don't want to be a parent. I don't want to change diapers. You know, I just, I want to be pregnant once, and I want somebody to swiftly take the child away from me as soon as it is out of me. That is what I would like. Thanks. I'm now taking offers. Um... trying to think of more stuff. Toby today. I'm I'm back on the the dog sitting thing. I'm dog sitting again this week. And this poor puppy man. He's so sad. We had a good day on the two walks that I gave him today. He was good. He didn't run or pull me and he just went pee in his little spot. And then the rest of the day, he would just sleep. He'd sleep, but he'd be very dramatic and sad looking about it. But then it was like midnight, so I told him it was bedtime. It's time for me to put him in his kennel, which is in my sister's room. And th this dog, he gets up and follows me to the room. So I figure like, yeah, he knows it's kennel time. He runs in there and he, first, he runs and jumps on my sister's bed. Because that's where he usually sleeps with my sister. And I'm just like, no, you can't. No, you need to be in your kennel. I can't leave you out like this, Tobe. And he would not. It took, I had to go get my shoes and put them on. Come show Toby that I had put on my shoes. And then go get his leash. And then just like jingle it around so he could hear it. And walk back towards him. And then he got off the bed. And he was like, oh, it's walkie's time. I'm like, no, get in your kennel. So he got in the kennel. But it was just so sad because he was like, it's bedtime. This is where I sleep. Anyway, so hit me up if you want to see the pictures of my uterine lining. Love you guys.